Welcome back. Now she's back to tackle your questions about the menopause. Dr. Louise Newson is here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Loads and loads of calls, as you Absolutely, expected on this. Yeah. So should we go straight to North Yorkshire and Kelly? Good morning, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. How are you? Oh, morning. I'm good, thank you. Right. The floor is yours. Talk right. So for the last six months, I've been experiencing um, all the symptoms. So I went to the doctor recently who did some blood tests, which all came back normal. Um, so basically they've turned around and said to up my antidepressants rather than give me anything else. So I just want to know, can I get a second opinion or can I ask to be put on HRT? Because it's really affecting my life. OK, and you're 41, aren't you? I am, yeah. OK. Yeah, so the, the guidelines are very clear, actually, that we don't need to do uh, blood tests. Between the ages of 40 and 45, they say you might, and under 40, actually, they still recommend that FSH, follicle-stimulating hormone, a blood test can be useful. But actually, in my clinical experience, I see so many women who have had normal tests. It might be normal the time you have your blood test, mm. but three in the morning when you're feeling awful, or another time, it will be low. We're not going to do loads of blood tests, mm -mm. actually. So it's looking at symptoms, and and certainly, if you feel that you might be perimenopausal or menopausal, then it is worth thinking, well, can I take some hormones to see? And with hormones, all we often do, especially in the perimenopause, is just start a low dose, see if it helps, and then you know. But it's a bit like with antidepressants. You don't do a blood test before you start antidepressants. But antidepressants yeah. shouldn't be given first line for the low mood associated with the perimenopause or menopause. If you've got other symptoms and you think it might be, and often women are quite intuitive, aren't they, Holly? Mm -hmm. You know, we often Absolutely. know if it's related to our hormones. Then HRT for most women is very safe. So we usually say to people, you could try it for three months and then we can review you. If you're starting to feel better, then we can review the dose and type. Uh, but certainly it's would be better than increasing antidepressants. And Kelly's point there was, can I ask for it? Yeah. I think a lot of people feel like that. Can you ask for yeah, it? Yeah, actually, it's really important. As patients, we need to be in control. We know what it's like to have symptoms every day. And certainly, we've got nice guidance for shared decision-making. We can share the decision, share the uncertainty, share any risks and benefits of any treatment with our clinician. We've got nice guidance showing how safe HRT is. If we have decided as a patient that we want HRT, mm -hmm. then we should be able to discuss it um, with our healthcare professional who should allow us to have a treatment that's evidence-based. Well, Kelly, ask the question. That's what I would do. Um, thank you oh, for your call. Thank, thank you very much. So. Thank you for your help. Thank you. Uh, right, we'll go to Emma now. Hi, Emma. Oh, hello, guys. Hi, hello. good morning. Good to talk Hi, to you. Um, how can we help? Well, I'd like to know when you are when you know you are through the menopause, and um, will I get my energy levels back once I'm through it? Okay, and you became menopausal at the age of thirty six, so you were younger than what somebody would necessarily think. Oh, You're now forty three. Um, I am. So, so yeah. Sadly, no one's ever through the menopause. When we think about the menopause, it's always about periods or fertility, but actually it's because our ovaries aren't working or we don't have our ovaries, depending on the cause. Without our ovaries, we don't have the hormones. So low hormones are there forever, regardless of symptoms. Some people find their symptoms improve with time. Many people find their symptoms change. Mm -hmm. So that's why for most women, they carry on taking HRT forever. But a lot of women actually need to change the dose and type. So a third of women who come to my clinic actually are already on HRT, but they're still having symptoms. Right. So often what we do is spend a lot of time working out what's the best dose, what's the best type? Do you need to add in testosterone? Do you need to change the dose of estrogen or change the progesterone? Make it right for you at that time. And many of us change our HRT doses as we get older as well. So it's important to be reviewed by a specialist and see whether you need your dose changing. And lots of people can have low energy. It might not be your hormones. It could be other things. But talking to someone who's really holistic about menopause care is really important. OK. I have a gynaecologist. But I lost him after um, after lockdown, so I'll, I'll try and start that again. That sounds thank you. sensible. Good luck, Very Anna. sensible, yeah. Thank you. Um, this is from Amanda. Uh, what can disabled women do about their symptoms? I'm looking for advice as a disabled woman going through the menopause. I'm unable to have HRT due to being paraplegic and needing a wheelchair. I'm really struggling with menopause symptoms, but there doesn't seem to be any help available. That's Amanda. 
So it's really great that Amanda's written in um, or phoned in today because there are a lot of women who are disabled who think they can't have HRT. There's a lot of free information on Balance App. And actually this week I've done a podcast for someone who was disabled, again told that they can't. Older types of HRT can't be given because there's an increased risk of clot. And if people are immobile, they have an increased risk uh -huh. of clot. Two increased risks you wouldn't want. The HRT we often prescribe is the oestrogen, as you know, through the skin as a patch or gel, the, the natural progesterone. They don't have a clot risk with them. So it is actually important to consider HRT because it can improve your symptoms. Also, people who are disabled have an increased risk of osteoporosis, Bone, you know, thinning of the bones, taking HRT can improve bone strength as well. Um, also, a lot of people find that they have more urinary symptoms, localised symptoms, local types of hormones as well as HRT can help as well. So it's looking for the right dose and type for you that actually could make quite a difference. OK, so maybe just going back and questioning why she's not allowed it and if it is because of the clotting then now you've yeah. got the information. Absolutely, in yeah. OK, Amanda, I hope that helps. Um, Sarah says, uh, I'm 36, I've been suffering with menopausal symptoms for over a year, including hot flushes, night sweats, lack of libido and mood swings. My GP originally said I could be treated just based on my symptoms, but now they're making me wait for another blood test in six weeks to rule anything else out. Early menopause runs in my family. I'm really fed up with suffering the symptoms and need some advice. Yeah, so no one should be suffering, in my mind, when there's treatment available. Like I've said, the guidance do say that you should have two raised FSH blood tests at least six weeks apart. In my experience, I've seen lots of women with normal FSH blood tests, but mm -hmm. they've got barn door symptoms, and especially with a family history of early menopause, then putting two and two together and making four rather than 400, I would certainly consider trying HRT. Of course, there could be other reasons for symptoms, and if that is symptoms don't improve, then that's when we investigate and see what else is going on. Um, there are some drugs, such as cotiapine, some of the antidepressants, can suppress FSH levels. So some people have low FSH levels, and that will suppress oestrogen and testosterone production from the ovaries. So I know the some of the guidelines are being reviewed and might change soon, but I would absolutely not go just on a blood test. And it's the same in other areas of medicine. It's looking to, at the patient, listening to symptoms, and having a trial of HRT is actually a very safe thing to do. Yeah. Is there a place for families to learn more about yeah. it? Because obviously it affects lots and lots yeah. of people, doesn't it? And the more knowledge you have, well, the easier it is for Definitely. everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And even in my new book, I have written about family and I've, my 18-year-old daughter has written about the experience of how it, awful it was when I was perimenopausal. Through her eyes, really important. So for children, for partners, really important because we want to work together and help, mm. but it can be very isolating and very scary when you're perimenopausal or menopausal. And actually, it's quite hard to speak up. There's mm. this invisibility of women that occurs, especially in the perimenopause and menopause. So the more people that can help us and support us and actually help us get the right treatment mm. is really important for everybody. Um, nice. Brilliant, as always. Thank you. Thank so you. good to see you. you. Right. In